I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Hopefully you had a chance to get outside a little bit, do a little, little nature healing time. That's why I always think of it as, especially if I can do something calm, like just take a gentle walk or something. But then I know for me, the tendency is to then get into, you know, an activity and maybe be a little competitive. But in the sister science to yoga, that idea of um, nature and healing and really anything that has to do with filling back up your energy reserves so you have something to give, um, it has to do with a little bit more restorative action out in nature. And so that's what I try to get myself to do a little bit of. And it's what we'll focus on a little bit this week is that idea of, yes, we might work hard for a little bit of it, maybe build up a little bit of strength, but then to make sure to take even a few minutes of time to restore, to build back up that energy reserve and not push. Um, and so as you take a comfortable seat, take the time to move your sitting bones, to find the movement of your pelvis so that your belly can tilt a little bit forward. And then rest your hands down. Palms down if you need to contain a little bit of energy. Palms up if you would like to build up some energy. So you decide what would be the right thing for you in this moment. And as you close your eyes, begin to let your breath deepen. And begin to let yourself set that intention of building back up your energy reserve. And now connect hands together at heart center and gently press your palms together as you lift up through your sides, lift your shoulders up and back, lengthen the back of your neck. Take a full deep inhale and exhale here. Then on your next exhale, bow toward your heart. And softly opening your eyes, releasing your hands down. Give a little gentle press into your legs, finding that action of grounding. And then add a little bit of movement here through your pelvis. You're starting to find a little side to side movement, a little forward and back movement. And then just make a mental note of what is going on for you sensation wise, what's happening any place in the body but particularly notice maybe into the low back, the hips, the hamstrings, the quads. And then start to move a little bit deeper. Begin to add that movement forward and back through the pelvis, coming into that seated cat and cow action. And as you do so, again, be thinking about it being a gentle and conscious movement that's helping you to build back up energy as opposed to use energy. Yes, it takes some energy to make the action, but take three more big breaths here. You can allow that movement and breath to happen at the same time, or if you're finding movement that's different than your breath, that's okay too. All right, come back into center and switch the cross of your legs, coming to the less comfortable cross for yourself and move your sitting bones. And as you move your sitting bones, just again, notice that tilt of your pelvis so your belly can come a little bit forward. Turn your palms open, fingertips reaching out to the sides, plug your shoulder blades in onto your back, and then take a couple of movements with your head and your neck, ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. You might close your eyes here if that feels good to help yourself tune a little bit more inward. And now lifting your chin up toward the ceiling. Again, shoulder blades are engaging onto your back. 
Think of the front neck muscles being stretched a little bit here. And then you can add that little bit of shake of your head toward the ceiling if that feels okay in your body. Then as you come back into center now, take hands behind your back to clasp and we're pressing palms together, keeping the elbows a little bit bent. Lift your shoulders up and back and start to hug the elbows toward each other. Couple big breaths. You're welcome to take that ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder movement here again if you would like, or you can stay a little bit more stationary with your head and neck. As you take a couple big breaths, re-engage shoulder blades a couple of times. Engage and then release a little, engage and then release a little. And then releasing hands, take hands in front to clasp, and we'll go in the opposite direction, pull forward, and then round back through the upper back, your chin tucks in, and then add a little bit of movement here side to side, through your sides, through your shoulders, thinking of lengthening down into the sides of the back, and the lats, maybe some of the low back muscles. Then inhale, sit tall, flip your palms around, staying clasped with your hands and draw shoulder blades onto your back. Lift up with your arms. As you lift up, just notice for yourself what happens here through your back body and maybe give a little tone through the low belly and the ribs. Press up with your palms, draw shoulder blades onto your back. Then a little ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder here. Then back into center with your head and neck and take a side to side stretch. As you stretch side to side, think of rooting through both sitting bones. And then come back into center, release your hands, walk your hands forward and come into as deep a forward fold as your body is ready for. If you have blocks and you'd like to use them, you can work elbows onto your blocks or you can come all the way down onto the floor in this forward fold. But again, notice for yourself where the sensations are. Bring awareness to wherever the sensation is knowing full well that your body and my body and anybody else on this video, their body is gonna feel something a little bit different. There's no right or wrong answer. Just notice what's there. And then rise up onto your hands and we'll shift forward onto hands and knees. And from hands and knees, just for a moment, take the time to set yourself up. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Tucking toes under, and now notice your upper arm bones and bring that rotation to the upper arm bones so that your elbow pits are trying to turn a little forward. If you are a hyper extender, then you get to keep a little bend to the elbows. Push into your hands, expanding into the upper back, then lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog pose, and take a couple moments here to pedal out. Bending one knee at a time, Maybe giving your hips a little sway. And then rise to tiptoes, lift sitting bones up high, push from lats out through your hands. And now walk your way forward, coming into your forward fold at the front of your mat. Feet inner hip bone distance apart or wider. Inhale, lengthen part way. Hands up above your knees here. Keep a bend to your knees. Send sitting bones up and extend forward through your collarbones and your front ribs. Exhale, fold over your legs. Hands to hips, press back on hips, lift shoulders up, lift elbows up and rise all the way up to stand. And then reset yourself. Come back to inner hip distance. And again, you can be a little wider if that feels better on the hips or the low back here. Lift and spread your toes and root down. Turn your palms open, lift up and open through the shoulders. If you'd like, you can close your eyes, but take a full deep breath and feel that even balance of both feet. Then inhale, stretch up overhead. Soft knees, exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, lengthen part way. 
exhale and fold. Planting fingertips, step your right foot back into your lunge. Pause here, center with your hips, drawing the left hip back in space, and then bring your hands up to your hips to rise. And as you keep that centered action with your hips, bend into your front knee. Think of allowing your knee to move toward being stacked right over your arch. Then press down with your hands, lift your ribs, your sides, your heart up even higher, hug back with elbows, expanding and opening through the heart space. Take another full big breath. Exhaling hands come down to the front of your mat. Find whatever you're using for props and come up to the highest point and then work your front leg towards straight. And if you are a hyperextender, again, keep a little micro bend to that knee. Push down with your left big toe mound and wrap your left hip back. Little bend to your right knee, tilt both sitting bones up, extend longer through your front. Take a full big breath. Inhale, bend into your front knee, set your back knee on the ground if you would like. If it feels better to keep it lifted, you can. But we'll take a spinal twist here. Right hand to the floor or a block at the edge of your mat. Left hand to your knee as you start to turn your belly and your heart to the left side. Put both shoulder blades on your back and push. As you push down through your right hand, think of lifting up and out of your shoulder and then maybe stretch up. Take a full big deep breath. Exhaling, both hands come down to the front of your mat and we'll step back either to hands and knees or to a downward facing dog pose, whichever works for your body this morning. Thinking of taking that compassionate action for yourself. Full breath. And now inhale, come forward into your plank. Use knees on the ground if you would like to. Extend forward through your front. Think of rotating elbow pits forward and pushing so that your upper back expands. Take a deep breath here. And then before we take the second side of our standing poses, settle hips back towards your heels into your child's pose, your favorite variation and then add a little bit of movement. Sway side to side your hips. Maybe walk your fingertips a little further forward. Then inhale, rise to hands and knees. And exhale, downward facing dog pose. Take a big, full, deep breath. And again, from lats, push out through your hands, lift sitting bones up higher. And then walk your way forward, coming into forward fold at the front of your mat. Take as many steps as you need to to get there. Inhale and lengthen part way, long spine. Exhale and fold over your legs. Fingertips plant, step left foot back into your lunge. Pause here and center with your hips, drawing right hip back in space. Then push with your feet to bring yourself upright. Torso lifts. And this time, if you'd like to, you can take a clasp with your hands. It's a little different than the other side, but that's okay. As you settle deeper into your front knee, think of letting your knee move toward that stacked place over your arch, not knee over ankle, allowing for a little bit more of that ankle flexion. Lift sides, lift shoulders, lift your heart. Press your palms together or toward each other and hug your elbows back. Full big deep breath. Then releasing your hands down to the highest point of whatever you have. Blocks, a stack of books, a chair, whatever it is. And then work your front leg towards straight, coming into this hamstring stretch. Right big toe mound pushes down. Wrap your right hip back and then send sitting bones up. Helps to give your back knee a little bend for that tilt of your pelvis here sometimes. So as you find that stretch sensation for yourself, and sometimes if you have really open hamstrings and you're like, oh, I don't feel a stretch at all. It's not ever what I experienced, but you might take a big breath into whatever's there.
and then bend into your front knee. And you're setting your back knee down if you would like. You don't have to. And then set left hand on the edge of your mat. It can be on a block here if you want. Right hand to your knee. And as you push down with your left hand, think of not just rising up out of your shoulders, but think of lifting up with your ribs to help you twist. And then maybe stretch the top arm up if, you, if that feels okay. If there's any difficulty through the rotator cuff, you can always keep your hand on your hip or knee. Take a big deep breath. On your exhale, both hands come all the way back down to the ground and settle back on the hands and knees. And then one more time, hips to heels, take a child's pose and take a moment to just sense. Notice for yourself what is present in your body. Maybe add a little bit of movement here through the hips or the arms. And now gently bring yourself back upright. Coming all the way to your seat, hips all the way to the ground. And from here, if you have a blanket, feel free to grab it. You can always use a pillow or a bolster instead, but we'll create a roll if you're using a blanket and set it underneath your thighs. And then your thighs get to come to rest down on your blanket, or again, pillow or bolster, move your sitting bones. And then press down with your heels, and draw your toes back. Really think of pulling toes back for a deep flex. Lift your ribs, your chest, your heart. And from right here, this variation of staff pose, take a moment to notice what's there for sensation. Then long through your spine, start to walk your hands down the outsides of your legs towards your feet. You can always take your hands to your toes if that's a comfortable place for you right now, or keep them on the floor. Lots of options there, but a little bit more gentle in the forward fold. Press down through your heels and think of drawing them back, isometrically pulling back. And now inhale all the way back upright. Legs stay in the same place, or you can shift them to a more wide or narrow if you like. But we'll take a twist over to the left side, pressing down with your left fingertips behind you. Right hand is at your thigh, maybe at your knee, and then lift through your sides. Now, as you exhale, draw your ribs in to help you twist a little bit more. And then from this place, if you want to walk your hand down the outside of your leg, to find a little bit more of a fold, you're welcome to. But again, draw ribs in to help you twist a little bit more. Take a full big breath. Then inhale, rise all the way back up. And exhale, take that twist over to the right side. Press down on fingertips behind you or beside you. Hand at your thigh, lift up through your sides. Exhale, ribs in to help you twist. Inhale tall. Exhale, if you'd like, you can walk your hand down the outside of your leg toward your foot. You're always welcome to stay more upright in this twist. Big breath. Then inhale back upright, walk feet in. And then moving your blanket aside, soles of feet come together into a butterfly and inch your feet a little closer together so you're making more contact with the pinky toe edge, with the heel. And from there, you can, if it feels good, start to open your feet up a little bit like a book. So your pinky toe edges still connect but then your big toe edges come apart. From that place, reach energetically through your thighs toward the walls on either side of you. Lift up through your sides, 
long all the way down at your pelvis. So think of a tilt forward with your belly. Big deep breath. And then take a moment here with your long spine to recognize what's there for sensation. You notice specific places in your body where there is sensation. And then as you lift up even taller, bring your knees up together and walk your feet in as close as your body is ready for or as far away as you need to lengthen through your spine and then fold over your legs. You can wrap your arms around your legs here if you'd like or just take arms to the ground, but tuck your chin in and take a big breath into your back body. Then as you rise all the way back up to a tall spine, we're gonna come down onto our backs. Make sure props are handy. And as you make your way onto your back, if you do have a blanket and you know your neck likes it, then maybe set your blanket at the back of your mat to go underneath your neck for Shavasana. But then draw knees up towards your chest and you can take knees wide or narrow, whichever feels the best and rock a little side to side, giving your back body a little bit of massage from the ground. And now as you come back into center, set right foot on the ground, left knee is lifted towards your chest, and then extend your left leg up long. Clasp behind the back side of your left thigh and reach through your left heel. Toes draw back towards your knee. And now left thumb into your hip crease, give your hip crease a push. So you're creating a little bit more length from hip to armpit here. As you stay reaching through your heel, you're gonna keep your left hip on the ground and just draw it slightly leg to the right side without that hip losing connection with the ground. Full big deep breath here, reach through your heel. And now as you come back into center, we're gonna switch hands and hold on to left leg with the right hand, or left leg with the left hand rather, and then start to open it up to the left side. And as you open your leg up, you can use your hand as a little prop here if you want, or you can set something underneath the leg. Right leg can stay knee bent or leg extended, your choice. Take a big, full, deep breath. Reach out through your left heel. And now bend your knee to draw your leg back into center and take it across your body for a spinal twist to the right side. You can shift your shoulders over in the direction of your twist if you want. You can come to a cactus or a T with your arm if you'd like. Maybe take your gaze over to the left. Full deep breath. And then back into center here, draw your knee in and give it a squeeze in towards your side. And then set left foot down and draw right knee in towards your chest and then extend your leg. Hands behind the back side of your thigh. As you reach up through your heel, press hamstrings into your hands. And then right thumb goes into your hip crease. Give your hip crease a push. And as you do so, as you create that length through your side, you might notice your entire leg rotating a little bit. Your toes will turn just slightly to the right. And keep your right hip down as you draw your leg just slightly to the left. Not enough to lift your hip. 
but then reach again through your heel. I like to stay pressing onto the hip, onto the thigh bone, creating that space still. That tends to add a little bit more sensation into the stretch. And now back into center, we're gonna use the right hand on the outside of the leg or a prop to open the leg up to the right side. Maybe extend your left leg all the way out. That's your choice. Make both feet active. Take a full big breath. And now bending your knee, draw your knee back into center and across your body to the left side. And feel free to shift your shoulders over a few inches to the left. Sometimes that helps for the shoulders to come all the way down in your twist. If you want, you can extend right arm out, maybe take your gaze to the right. Take a couple full big deep breaths. And then bringing your knee back into center, you can give it a squeeze in toward your side. And now as you set both feet on the ground, knees are bent, walk your feet out wider than your mat. Take a nice wide stance here and take slow movements side to side if that's comfortable on your knees. And it can be a deep movement where your opposite hip lifts considerably or it can be a smaller movement. So you get to find out for yourself what feels good, what's right for your body. Recognizing that compassionate action that might help you feel more rejuvenated as opposed to using up the energy. Take one more on each side here. And then we're making our way into our most comfortable resting pose. So feel free to make your way to a wall or grab some props to set underneath your legs or come up to a seated meditation if that feels the best to you. But come to your evenly balanced resting pose and give yourself an opportunity to release, to rest, to let go. Bring awareness back to your breath and to where sensations are in the body. Add some gentle movements into fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. And then slowly bend your knees, roll over to whichever side feels best. 
and take a full breath. Using as little energy as you can, press yourself back upright to your seat. And connect hands together at heart center. With eyes closed, take another moment here to tune back into your breath. And set that intention, maybe for the rest of your day, maybe for your whole week, of giving yourself moments of self-care. Have a very peaceful and beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Thanks, everybody.